such a time as this. And welcome back to For Such a Time as This, the place where there is no such thing as a silent witness follow up to everything Jacob a Blake. It is Thursday, the 27th of August. Here's what we do know. First of all, let me play the clip. I won't play it all, but this is the clip that is sparking outrage. Cause, uh, let me be nice. It caused the NBA players to stop playing basketball. The one thing that their job does require them to do, play basketball, they're not playing basketball anymore. I'm good with that. Causing the walk off. Let me play a little bit of the clip here with Jacob Lemming, and then we'll bring in our guest. Here it is. We're getting a new look now at the weekend police shooting in Wisconsin that's sparking those protests we saw tonight. That video just into our newsroom, captured by, from a yard on the same street of the shooting where it happened. It shows Jacob Blake appearing to be on the ground beside the car before he's able to get up and start walking around to the front of the vehicle to the driver's seat. You can't see the officer shooting Blake in this footage, but six gunshots are heard. This graphic video posted on Facebook shows the moment an encounter between Jake. Okay, we don't need to see that. What you had there was Jacob uh, Blake going around to the car, not uh, listening to the police, and he subsequently was sh shot. Here to discuss these things is... Jay Thompson, uh, he's been on the show before. Welcome, welcome, Jay. James, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, so what is your initial, before I grill you, what is your initial response to all things Jacob Blake? And before I turn it over, again, it was tragic, but you know my position. The man did not listen to police who had guns drawn unfortunate um, but go ahead uh, Jay you you give your give your take on it yeah I, uh, emotions are all over the place but we won't be led by feelings here let's let's start with just what do we know how do I think about this and when I saw the video like you said it was tragic to see someone shot seven times um, in the back like that but <clears throat> I also noticed that he wasn't listening to the commands of the cop, and I was always taught as a young African-American male, my mom always taught me that when you get pulled over or anything with the cops, law enforcement, you listen um, to avoid any mistakes like the one that happened with uh, Mr. Blake. And so initially I thought, man, he sh I wish he would have listened. Maybe the outcome would have been different. But what's bothering me more is, is the response the response by maybe some NBA players, the response by people on Twitter and social media, and even in, in Kenosha, Wisconsin. I mean, I it's hard for me right now, knowing all the evidence that we have and, and, and all the facts that have come out, it's hard for me to say that this was race-based, that this, this man shot Mr. Blake because he was black. It's hard for me to say that now with the facts that we have. And so, therefore, it's hard for me to be okay with the NBA players not um, protesting. They're protesting because of what happened and, and, you know, all the fires that are going on in Wisconsin because this has happened. It's hard for me to get behind some of that. While at the same time, I do agree that there is racism in America. I do agree that there is racial injustice that goes on. Um, and, and as Christians, sadly, I think some of that is in the church and should be dealt with. But in this particular instance, I don't believe that this was race motivated. So how do I talk about the issues of race while at the same time denying that this was racially motivated? I'm not sure I know how to how to do that. Okay, before we go any further, I just want to clarify something. Um, you said mistake. What, what's up with the mis What's up with the mistake? Do you mean to say that mistake? In terms of uh, Mr. Blake not following the commands of of the officers. You, you said there was a mistake that happened with Mr. Blake. What was the mistake? Maybe you didn't mean that. I'm just asking clarifying question. Sure, sure. 
the mistake is that he wasn't listening to the commands of the officers. That's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah, he, he made a mistake. Okay, the mistake. Okay, so so here's the thing. Uh, Jay and I, we started to have conversations uh, concerning that. Um, so, Jay, I just want to ask one question, just, just, just one question. So you said something in your statement. You said there's real injustice in the church. I think it was racial injustice in the church. Can you explain that, please? Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe another podcast <laughs> when we talk about uh, defining race and racism, racial injustice. I, what I meant was that I think there are people within the, the church, <clears throat> the Christian evangelical church, that do, may struggle with, may not even know they do, with uh, racial prejudice in their hearts. And so that's what I mean by there are, so I said injustice in the, in the world and racial prejudice in the church. Which would be sin, and I agree there's sin in, in, in the church, all types of sin. So I agree with you. So, so here's the thing, here's how this podcast came about. We're talking about how do you talk to LeBron James or people of, 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 of the opinion that there's this massive racial problem in the United States of America. And so, uh, so I, asked, I asked Jay to answer this, and I want, him to, I want to get his take on this. So when you have someone who says, Jacob Blake was a black man, and at the time they were saying an unarmed black man, we know he's armed now, but he's a black man who got shot in the back by the police. What do you say to them, Jay? Yeah, so I'll give a disclaimer. I struggle with, with this question because I go back and forth on how to communicate effectively. And, and, and let me just say this. I said, for my generation, an unknown black man was shot in the back from the, from the police. My generation, or maybe me, says, yeah, because he didn't listen, period. And so Jay said it's not enough for his generation, so we're going to give your generation a take. Go ahead, Jay. He, <laughs> he's right. He's right. It's yeah. not, it's not, it, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think it's enough um, to just say that, especially in our cultural climate, I think that in order for people to listen, you have to let people know where you are in your position, because right now there are a lot of extremes in social media. What do I mean? I think there's a lot of people who are saying things, but they have a, a bias or they have um, uh, a bent that they're trying to, that they're, they're making or that they're a part of. And so... <clears throat> I want people to know that I don't have a bent, I don't have an agenda, I don't have a bias. I want to have an honest conversation, and it's hard to do that if people assume that you have a biased or agenda. So I think the best approach is to lay your cards on the table so that people know, hey, I, I agree in the sense that I agree that there is racial injustice in America. As a Christian, I believe that we struggle with it in the church. And it's, it should be dealt with. You said again, racial injustice. You use that term again in the church. Oh, and you got to be careful about racial. So, so if you didn't mean racial injustice, explain to me what you mean. Already, you see the difference between my generation and his. His generation talks too much. <laughs> we, it was very clear. You don't have to man be pan. But I, that's just me. And I could be wrong. But, but go ahead and, and pick it up from the racial injustice stuff. I don't want to speak for my gender. Maybe I talk too much. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that's the problem. But um, sorry, racial injustice in America, racial prejudice in the church. And I, I, I agree with all that. And I'd, I'd let people know that from the jump that, hey, that's where my head's at. That's where I understand that. And I agree that there are not every instance, but there are some instances have been in the past, maybe a few now where cops are motivated racially but this one wasn't it and so I'd like to open that conversation and I would say it in such a way that maybe puts the defenses down from other people from my opponents so that they know I don't have an agenda I just want to talk about this situation 
so the agenda to seek the truth of the matter is not enough, right? Because because me, when they say when they say black man, sh unarmed black man shot in the back by police seven times. My inclination is to say is that true, but I guess your inclination is to coddle the feelings first before you you talk about this and so the racial again racial prejudices in the church what does that mean and why do you feel the need to somehow denigrate the church before you give an answer and maybe denigrate is too strong a word but why do you even need to say that instead of saying that's not true LeBron? that's not what happened Explain to me, one, racial injustice—I'm sorry, racial prejudices in the church. Why do we need to say that as Christians when simply saying not true isn't enough? Nah, that's just for me, but you, you go ahead. <laughs> that's a good— they're all good questions. And again, disclaimer, James doesn't like disclaimers, so I'm going to give my disclaimers all day, that I'm struggling with this, so still trying to work this out. But so I, I don't—it's true— Again, it is true that we do struggle with race within the church, and I think that lets people know— But prejudices, what does that mean? I, I, what I'm trying to say is that I think there are people who are Christians who do struggle with having a racial bias towards their own race. And I, and I, and I think everybody can agree with that, the racial bias, but when you say within the church— are we talking about strictly that those things that happen within the hearts of men, or are you saying some sort of way institutionalized within the church body? Yeah, no, not institutionalized. I'm talking on individuals, individual men who struggle individually, yeah. So what you mean is that Christians have racial prejudices. Okay. Yeah, yeah Christians have racial prejudices, yes. And I think what that does is, again, it tears down the defenses. It lets people know exactly where I'm coming from so they don't have to question, well, does this guy even care about the black community or is he trying to? So there's an old saying that goes, they don't care what you know until they know that you care. And I think there is some, not all, but some validity to that. In the Bible, it also says, um, I think it's First Corinthians. You can have all knowledge, but without love, you are a sounding gong and a clanging cymbal. I take that to mean you're very annoying. And so I want people to know that, hey, I'm coming from a position of, of love here. I'm still going to tell you the truth, but I want you to know that I'm coming from a position of love. Will that always work? Absolutely not. But walking away from the conversation with me, there will be no doubt where I stand 100%. The truth is I have talked to some people about racial tension and racial issues, and I wonder, do they even care about black people? And to me, that's important because if you hate black people, and you're talking about race, that lets me know that all your information is skewed right there from the jump. It's going to be hard to listen to you. But if I know that, hey, no, this guy genuinely seeking out the truth, genuinely wants to have a conversation, there is no agenda. He's not trying to make one uh, uh, person or group look bad over the other. It's easier to have a conversation with that person. And so it's hard, as I go on social media and Twitter, it's hard to dialogue with people when they're so extreme as opposed to level-headed and saying, hey, this is where I am, this is what I see. So you got to, when talking to LeBron James, you think that if you tell him uh, everybody struggles with racial bias, Christians struggle with racial prejudices, that somehow that's going to open up LeBron's ears to hear the truth, that the dude wasn't unarmed, that the dude just finished fighting with the police, that the, that the dude had an active warrant out for assault and battery, that the dude in his history, I don't know if that warrant was still out, but the dude had a rap sheet with a, a, a deadly weapon, an assault, and that the dude wasn't there to break up a fight. He was causing the fight. I mean, you, you think, you think, uh, 
You think all that's going going to go in your favor, that that Jay? I, I mean, and you think you you really think? No. Have you had history and that working uh, with those type of people? That's a great question. Hypotheticals are hard to answer. Somebody once told me so. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say I have no clue. But not hypothetical. Jeffrey has it ever worked? Not hypothetical. Right. I've had longer. I've I've learned. I have a general rule now. I've had longer conversations with people when I do that, when I give disclaimers, as opposed to going right up to the jump and telling them what I know they're going to disagree with. Um, I've had longer conversations with people when I've given disclaimers and I've let showed my cards and let them know, hey, this is the position I'm coming from. No agenda. Just simply want to talk. At that t- that brings down people's defenses. I you can't control their can't control their how they're going to respond to the truth. And I still say the truth, but I don't want to unnecessarily offend because I would like to have a conversation. If the, and if I can do that, then I'm going to do that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're a little over time. Thank thanks, Jay. It, 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 maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me, but I I, I don't think the LeBron Jameses of the world care about our bleeding heart positions. Maybe it's just me. I don't think LeBron, I think particularly LeBron James, I think he's so arrogant. The man thinks he can walk on water, probably, but um, just look at him, Jay. Come on. Look at what he's said. The man comments on everything like he's an expert on everything. He knows nothing uh, except how to play basketball, but um, I, I just, that's just my opinion. Don't 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 get it. Look, I I get it that generation let's soothe the heart first. I, I think Jesus needs to have that class. Cause I I I and go call your husband. I ain't got no husband. You right. You have several husbands. And you shacking up now and he ain't your husband. I don't see too much. <laughs> I just don't see it. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, Jacob Lemming, again, I'll say it again, it was a, tra- it was a tragedy. Uh, it's sad. But to say that it was the police's fault, everything that comes out that's coming out clearly uh, leads to the conclusion that the police were not at fault, even though it was wrong, even though it was sad. Not wrong, it was sad what happened to Mr. Mr. Blake, Jacob Blake, it seems like he caused it. I mean, I know what my eyes saw, um, and the facts seem to be shaping up um, in that way. I think, again, overall, I think overall this is a, of a broader issue, of a broader effort to fundamentally change America through Marxist revolution. That's just me. Uh, thank you, Jay, for your interview. Thank you for looking in for Sister Time Is This. Be blessed. We'll be back. Such a time as this.